Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. everyone welcome to the second session for principles of management course i am dr shikha n khera and we will be taking forward the session towards session 2 on management processes and functions before we move on let's have a quick recap of the previous session that we discussed on introduction to management wherein we define the concept of management as the art of getting things done through others in efficient and effective manner now that you all know that in management we have to or a manager has to perform a series of activities and functions which are interrelated to each other and thus in order to get work done these series and activities are done in a systematic manner so the management is called as a process henry fiol who is regarded as the father of management gave us the managerial functions as planning organizing coordinating commanding and controlling but the much newer newer version of these principles and more accepted universal steps in the process of management are in today's time planning organizing staffing directing and controlling so let us begin this session and try to understand various functions of the management this is the management process as you can see here we have something called as an input and through the process of management that is with the help of management functions we gain the output let us try to understand what all ingredients we put in as input in the management process we also call them six m's of management it all starts with the management or organization starts with an idea in a human brain this idea is then generated as an organizational setup and once the organizational setup or organization is established the man or the promoter of the organization thinks of having the other required phenomenon material or human resources for the organization so what are they they include finances that is money material machine method and market once all these come into a common frame and an organization is established each manager has to perform certain functions which are planning organizing staffing leading and controlling so as to reach to the expected products and services by the customer which is the end result so here what we have to fundamentally understand that the management process has two types of functions and what are these two types of functions one category is called as operative functions and what are operative functions the six m's of management are operative functions they pertain to hr finance production marketing functions of the organization the second category of functions are called as managerial functions and what are managerial functions planning organizing staffing directing and controlling so i hope students now you are clear about the two terms operative functions of management and managerial functions of management operative functions which are the staff functions or the 
the functions wherein specialized field is acted upon by the manager like HR, finance, marketing etc. And managerial functions are planning, organizing etc. One thing that we have to understand here is that every manager has to perform all the managerial functions. So what do I mean by that? I mean to say here that these are the operative functions of management and each manager has to perform all the managerial functions for his department. Similarly, here production manager, then marketing manager will perform all the functions. Similarly, the finance manager will also perform the same function and it goes true for all the managers. Now let us study these two that is managerial and operative functions in detail. The operative functions include first production management. So production management is responsible for all aspects of production process. Production managers plan, supervise, coordinate and control the resources and activities required to produce goods in a cost effective manner. Other departments supervise and motivate their subordinates and also review their performances. Production managers oversee activities like production scheduling, staffing, machines, material procurement, development and maintenance of quality standards along with implementation of quality enhancement programs. Production managers usually act as the link between the top management and first line managers including supervisors. They ensure that the goals and policies of organization are implemented effectively. So in nutshell, they ensure that quality goods are produced within the prescribed time limit. Moving on to the second function that is second operative function we have to discuss is marketing management. Marketing management is concerned with planning, directing, coordinating and controlling the marketing activities that promote goods and services. If you may recall in the previous slide we discussed about the production manager where he has to produce the quality products and here the marketing manager has to find out the planning and coordinating part of marketing activities so as to promote the goods and services which were produced by the production department. Marketing managers are responsible for conceptualizing new product ideas, determining product prices, channel development and product promotion. They also undertake activities like estimating manpower requirements, training and motivating sales staff and evaluating their performance, conducting market research, product positioning and differentiation and managing customer relations. The exact role and responsibilities of marketing managers are determined by the size of the organization, nature of the product and services and characteristic of industry in general. These managers focus on the marketing programs to meet the business goals of organization and they report to the top management. The third operative function that we have to understand is the financial management. Financial management involves the management of finance department. Financial managers are responsible for arrangement and allocation of funds. They are responsible for the implementation of firms financial goals and budgets and increasing the efficiency of firms financial operations. They fulfill the organizational goals by controlling the cost of funds and optimizing the fund utilization. Further we need to identify the role of human resource management or human resource manager the primary objective of human resource management is to ensure the well-being of the employees at work from their joining to their exit of the organization. HR management is a unique function because HR managers not only supervise the activities of their own department 
but also advise other functional managers on matters pertaining to labor management in their department. HR managers usually act as liaison between the top management and the employees of different departments. Like other functional managers, they too perform managerial functions and coordinate with employees for their own departments. HR managers also perform certain specialized functions such as manpower planning, recruitment, selection, training and development, integration, performance evaluation, compensation fixation, maintenance of employee welfare, safety and health along with the separation of all employees. These managers also involve themselves in activities like maintenance of employee discipline, grievance identification and redressal, prevention of settlement of industrial disputes and promotion of industrial relations. So by now students, I think you are clear about the operative functions of the management. Now let us try to understand the managerial functions of the management and what are these managerial functions? Planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling. Let us move on understand as we know the management process includes steps to plan, organize, lead and control. So the resources to completely manage any particular task project or business on an ongoing basis. These processes need to be carried out by the managers or business leaders on continuous basis to ensure they are able to meet the business requirements with maximum efficiency. We have to have a coordination amongst all these functions of management. These functions may have any order to be implemented by the manager. Planning. What is planning? In simple terms, we may say that planning is scheduling of the activities. When you start a day, you think of the activities that you would be performing in that particular day. And when you identify the activities, you have clear goals in mind, you plan the day routine or the path for the day and that is nothing but scheduling of the activities and in simple terms it is nothing else than the planning. Let us see how managers plan in the organization. Planning helps an organization in formulating clear cut objectives and determining the best course of action for achieving them. It involves steps such as analyzing the existing environment, forecasting the future scenario, formulating specific objectives and goals and determining the resources and activities required for goal accomplishment. So here students you can find out that so many things a manager has to do while the manager is doing the planning function. He has to not only identify that what route or path what is to be done to achieve to the goal. He has to identify the resources, allocate the resources, find out the external environment, the threats and opportunities there in the environment. So he has to take a holistic picture before he move on to have a plan for himself or for the division that he works in. So planning is generally considered to the foremost function of management process because of its critical role in deciding the success of the organization. Planning is carried out by all managers at all levels. It forms the basis and provides direction for other managerial functions such as organizing, directing and controlling. This is because the accomplishment of organizational goals is the ultimate purpose of all managerial functions. Planning may initially cost the organization in terms, in terms of time and resources, but it can considerably reduce future uncertainties and difficulties in its operations. It enables the organization to predetermine the right mix of physical resource and the human resource. 
This knowledge of optimal efficiency helps the manager to work in systematic manner and achieve the organizational goal. Now we move on to the second managerial functions that is organizing. So what happens once that you have your plan ready with you? You know what activities and how you have to reach to the activities. The second part is now how will you delegate the tasks to the team? Who all will perform which all function? This part is catered by the organizing function. And this organization function is equally important and critical as planning is because if we are not able to identify whom to allocate or how the resources to be allocated properly, then we will not be able to achieve the desired result. Organizing involves the arrangement and allocation of the necessary physical human resources for achieving the goals of the firm. So here we are talking about the arrangement and allocation of the resources. <clears throat> the specific steps involved in the organizing process are establishing the organization structure. Why do we have to establish the organization structure? Because it will help us know the hierarchical level and with the help of this hierarchical level we would be in a better position to tell that which resource is to be given to which employee. It helps in determining the work, authority, responsibility and accountability of each member in relation to the job. So who is authorized to do which job? Who is responsible to do, do which job? Who is accountable to do which job? All these answers lie with the organizing function. More appropriately, if the manager performs it, it reduces the role ambiguity amongst the members and thus each member has a clear cut direction on what they have to perform. Assembling and allocating physical, financial and informational resources is also a part of organizing and it is required for task execution. <coughs> Developing conditions which are appropriate for optimum utilization of the resources also comes under the organizing function. However, each firm may require a unique organizational structure based on its goals and availability of required resources. Since the organizing process involves attracting, assigning, maintaining people for goal accomplishment, staffing usually becomes an integral part of organizing function. However, due to the complexities involved in the mobilization, maintenance and motivation of employees in the organization, many experts tend to view staffing as an independent managerial function. We shall now discuss the roles and responsibilities of managers in the staffing function. Staffing function is performed by all managers when they involve themselves in activities related to human resources such as the selection and motivation of their subordinates. So here the major focus of the manager in staffing function is to select the appropriate or the right kind of candidate and give a platform where the employee is highly motivated, his morale is also boosted. Without having an employee who has an intention to work, you cannot get work done by others. So in order to do the fundamental phenomena of management that is to get the work done by others, we need to find out that how well is the motivation, morale and commitment of the employee high. And this is the job of the manager when it comes to staffing function. Staffing function is not only restricted to the human resources department, but also every manager, be it marketing, finance or production or supply chain manager, they have to deal with the staffing function when it comes to recruiting their own team members for their specific projects. Further, the staffing function says that guiding principles of staffing is the selection of the right person at the right time for the right position at the right 
cost. Here you can see in this definition we are utilizing this adjective of right at every point. Why is it so? It is required because if the place is not filled with the appropriate individual, the whole effort of recruitment and selection goes futile and that incurs a huge cost to the organization. So staffing function is one of the most critical functions of a manager. Managers may perform the staffing function jointly with human resource managers or alone in the absence of an exclusive HR department. Generally, the activities involved in staffing are recruitment and selection, training and development, performance evaluation, compensation and benefits, fixation and industrial relations maintenance. Even large organizations with exclusive HR departments widely involve line managers in the staffing function. This is because of their good knowledge of the job, job holders and job environment in their own department. Now that we have understood the functions of planning, organizing, staffing, let us move on to the fourth function of management that is leading. Who is a leader? Leader is someone who directs who gives guidance, who becomes a mentor, who tells us which is the right path for us. And the same applies for the organization. Organization without effective leadership or right kind of leadership philosophy may not survive in long run. So leading is another most critical or effective function amongst all the functions of or the managerial functions of management. Let us now see what leading is all about. Leading is also known by different terms like directing, supervising and guiding. Leading as a managerial function aims at positively influencing the behavior of subordinates. Leading essentially involves activities like communicating, motivating the employees and directing them. So this term positively influencing has very high impact on the employees because what happens in organization the culture disseminates from the leadership and how the leader is behaving is imbibed by the followers or subordinates in the organization. So if the leadership is strong, firm, highly dedicated with high positive cultural values, it leads to a good impact on the subordinates as well. Further, by effectively leading, managers secure the best and willing cooperation of individuals and groups to achieve the organizational goals. As good leaders, managers should influence, inspire and motivate their subordinates. Managers should also establish an encouraging work environment that keeps the individual and group morale up. This efficiency of leadership usually depends on a manager's own personal traits and also on the situation involved. So by this we understand that how important is having a good leader in the organization because it has a direct relationship with the morale boosting of the subordinates. Moving further, let's now understand the next managerial function of management that is controlling. Now what is controlling students? You all must be appearing in the examinations. Do you know what examinations are? Examinations are nothing but the evaluation pattern for you all. And why this evaluation pattern? To let you know that whether your performance is within the control limits or not. If it is within the control limits, you go for party. If it is not, then you need to study and work hard so that you score optimum number of marks and your performance is within the control limits. So let us see what is controlling. Controlling is the last stage of management process. While planning determines the future course of action of the firm, controlling keeps it on the course. Controlling involves verification of the efficiency of individuals and groups. 
in accomplishing the organizational plans and goals by means or follow up measures. It ensures that all the activities are carried out by the subordinates as per the plans formulated, instructions given and orders issued along with the established procedures. Controlling usually involves the following steps. Developing standards of performance in the form of objectives and goals, measuring the actual performance, comparing the actual performance with the standards and initiating the necessary corrective action and the preventive action in case of any deviation from the actual performance. So, it is something like if this was the standard that you set for yourself, now you have to see have you met the standard with respect to the performance, is your performance above the standard or your performance is below the standard. We have to measure it, evaluate it and if it is at par with the standard set or above the standards that means our planning process was highly effective. But if it goes beyond the standard set, so that means there is a gap between the set performance and the delivered performance. And we have to identify the gap and take up the necessary corrective actions to resolve the issue. I hope by now you all have understood the operative functions of management and the managerial functions of management. Let us proceed further. The management process example. Now, the management process can be implemented on any project, business or activity. We have just now discussed the management process which had input management functions and output. So, this example will help us understand how the management process is followed in the organization. The core concept is to plan, arrange, make a team and execute the plan for the desired outcome. An example of management process can be that of a car manufacturer. The car manufacturer company must plan its output via sales plan, marketing plan, manpower needed, investment requirements etc. Once the plan is done, the car company will arrange for men, money, machine to manufacture the cars. The staffing stage will allocate the right people for the right job that is engineering, design, shop floor workers, finance, marketing, salesmen etc. The team leader will then ensure everyone is working together and will control the business by constant monitoring and evaluation process improvement. So, here you must have seen that how a car manufacturer can utilize all the managerial functions and get the desired results. Further, in reality what a manager does may not even happen in the sequence. So, regardless of the order in which these functions are performed, However, the fact is that managers do plan, organize, lead and control as they manage. An other example for the same is when a manager is working to keep her employees motivated and engaged that is leading. As she makes out the week's schedule that is planning. When she is trying to cut cost th those actions obviously involve controlling and dealing with unhappy customer is likely to involve leading and controlling or maybe even planning. So, although the functions approach is popular for describing what managers do, but some have argued that is not relevant. So, let us look at another perspective, another perspective which was given by Henry Mintzberg. So, what I wish to say here is that a manager is not a magician. It is only through experience and practical knowledge that a manager can become an effective leader. But first, it is important to recognize the roles and responsibilities of manager in different organizational structures. So, in this scenario, one of the leading management researchers, Henry Mintzberg gave Mintzberg roles of managers. Henry Mintzberg, a well-known management researcher, 
he actually studied the managers at work he is a he was a canadian management expert and author he came up with the idea of interweaving practical experience with business theory in his 1990 book mintsberg on management inside our strange world of organizations he listed clearly defined roles for managers to become effective team leaders in his first comprehensive study mintsberg concluded that what managers do can best be described by looking at the managerial roles they engage at the work the term managerial roles refer to specific actions or behaviors expected of and exhibited by a manager like think of different roles you people play such as a student employee student organization member volunteer a sibling and so forth and the different things you have expected to do in these roles when describing what managers do from a role perspective we are not looking at a specific person per se but at the expectations and responsibilities that are associated with being the person in that role so the role of a manager which were given by henry winsberg are basically 10 roles which are categorized into three categories we shall now discuss those 10 roles as given by henry mintsberg these are the 10 roles given by henry mintsberg under the three major categories of interpersonal informational and decisional roles the first three roles are figure head leader and liaison which come under interpersonal category interpersonal here means relationship within the organization and outside the organization informational roles are monitor disseminator and spokesperson so here communication is the essence of this role for the manager decisional as an entrepreneur as a disturbance handler as a resource allocator and as a negotiator let us now try to define these role independently when it comes to interpersonal roles the very first role that is figure head who is a figure head figure head is a symbolic head of the organization the leader who takes up the responsibility to show the direction or a path to the organizational members so as figure head a manager is responsible for official and social duties that reflect their status and authority in the organization it is about building a strong relationship with peers and subordinates you can become a good role model by being empathetic and compassionate figure head leader or manager second category under interpersonal role is the leader who is a leader leader who inspires encourages builds morale manages build lasting relationships with team members by monitoring their performance and coaching them when needed emotional intelligence can help you develop a trust based relationship with your team so when a manager is in a leadership role he takes care of the morale boosting compassion emotional intelligence and being a mindful leader which is more important so that he gives the optimum directions to the subordinates then comes the third role that is the role of a liaison under the role of liaison what a manager does is has to exchange information with various departments and teams as well as with the external stakeholders liaisoning with other organizations competitors and government representatives is equally important for professional developments when it comes to liaison with suppliers competitors or government organization it gives an opportunity to the manager as well as the organization to broaden their horizon and the perspectives of their operations these are the interpersonal roles that the manager performs now let us move on to the second category that is the informational roles that a manager has to perform under the informational role category the very first role is of a monitor so you all must remember those good days olden days when you were monitors in class some time of your life so similarly in organization also a manager has to perform the role of a monitor at times 
Now, what is the role of monitor with that he performs? It includes he is responsible for gathering the intel information for sustained competitive advantage. To do that, a manager has to assess the market for changes and collect relevant data that could impact the organization. These are stages in the process of strategic management that help an organization to survive the competition. So, a manager has to showcase highest amount of organizational citizenship behavior while he is as a monitor. As there, he has to find out those rare, unique resources which are non-imitable so that he is able to give the right kind of or give the right kind of strategic vision and direction to the organization. Next role that the manager has to perform under the informational role is of a disseminator. Now, who is a disseminator? The disseminator communicates useful and relevant information to team members and subordinates. It is important to invite feedback, ideas, views from each employee to keep an open channel of communication. Now, whenever in the organization there is any meeting, board discussions or any kind of new decisions to be done, something which is maybe you are launching a new product, you are making a design feature change in your product, you are thinking of adding a new market segment, etc. In all those cases and for general meetings and interactions, a manager needs to communicate with the internal members of the organization that is team members, subordinates, there he communicates as in the role of a disseminator. And when he is in role of disseminator, it is also his responsibility to take appropriate feedback on various aspects from the subordinates or the team members. Why this feedback is necessary? It is necessary so as to bring in large amount of different ideas and concepts with the help of which we can improvise upon our current functioning pattern. The next role under informational roles is of a spokesperson. Now, who is a spokesperson? A spokesperson who conveys important information about the organization to the external stakeholders. This could be for PR purposes that is public relations with the organization, outside the organization, addressing government policies or dealing with suppliers. You must have a clear idea of your company's brand image to become a successful spokesperson. When it comes to spokesperson, the manager is generally telling the outside world about how the organization is performing and what were the maybe the profits, what are the new launches by the organization, what are the forthcoming launches by the organization, what are the next moves by the organization or maybe what or how much dividend they could pay to their shareholders. So, all this information is disseminated as a spokesperson by the manager. Moving on to the third category of roles that, that is the decisional roles that a manager performs in the organization. Let us see what are the four decisional roles. Under this category, the very first role is of an entrepreneur. Now, who is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is a manager who has high risk taking ability, who believes in high risk and high profit. He has the courage to take up a new assignment. He can open up a new startup and face the competitive world. So, at times a manager also has to show up that courage and maybe he can have an incubation center in the organization itself where he develops a new idea that can tomorrow be launched at a bigger platform by the organization. So, what is entrepreneur all about? Entrepreneur role of the manager is be prepared to take initiative as part of your managerial duties. Initiate projects and address concerns with effective problem solving skills. Icebreakers and team building activities will help the manager to connect with the team. The second category of role is disturbance handler. Now we all understand 
that disturbances are inevitable in our lives. So as it is true for organization as well. In organizations too, at times, due to certain differences in opinions or maybe some conflicts and grievances, some amount of disturbance definitely takes place. And this disturbance then may lead to organizational issues, conflicts or challenges. So a manager has to take up the lead and try to be behave as a disturbance handler and resolve the issue and bring back the harmony and cooperation amongst the members. So what is the role of a disturbance handler? The disturbance handler ensures that everything runs smoothly. The key responsibilities include resolving conflicts with mentoring sessions, identifying areas for improvement and addressing the gaps in the teamwork. The third role as a decisional manager is of a resource allocator. Remember those days when you were a kid and there were resources in the maybe in school or at home, who used to allocate the resources? Maybe your teacher or your parents at home. So this is the role tomorrow the budding managers who are listening to me have to follow as a resource allocator in organization. Believe me, it seems very simple but it is a very critical activity because either the resources at times are less that is there is a resource crunch so that may create some interpersonal conflicts amongst the employees who desire those resources or who actually genuinely need those resources to perform their jobs or maybe the allocation of resources is faulty at times because of maybe nepotism or favoritism which can create discord in the organization. So a manager has to be a righteous, fair and just individual in terms of optimum allocation of the resource as per Henry Mintzberg's decisional role. So how does the manager do that? The resource allocator is concerned with fund allocation, cutting cost and disturbing, distributing resources across the organization. You have to apportion available resources such as funding human resource and materials wherever needed. The last role as per Henry Mintzberg is that of a negotiator. Now who is a negotiator and how does he perform? A successful negotiation leads to a win-win outcome for all the parties. A manager has to participate in negotiations with team members and other stakeholders to reach a favorable outcome of both the parties. This role distinguishes the manager from other managers because this manager has considered the team's interest at the foremost. So it becomes then very important that a manager takes up the role of a negotiator and tries to have the win-win situation for both the parties. So now what we have done, we have tried to understand the 10 different roles that a manager may have to perform in his career given by Henry Mintzberg. These 10 roles you may not perform together, all together, but there are chances that at one point in time, one individual manager is performing approximately 3 to 4 roles out of these at the same time in the same organization. So students you need to acumen and you need to develop your skill, upskill yourself in these roles effectively. Moving forward, so now is the time that a number of follow up studies have tested the validity of Mintzberg's role that we have just discussed. They have also got the evidence generally supports the idea that managers regardless of type of organization or level in the organization they perform the similar roles. However, the emphasis that manager give to the various roles seems to change with organizational level. At higher level of the organization the role of disseminator, figurehead and negotiator Lyson and spokesperson are more important while the leader's role as Mintzberg has decided defined is more important for lower level managers. 
than it is for entire middle or top level management. Henry Mintzberg's managerial roles are useful to assess the strengths and weaknesses of a manager and a manager can improve managerial duties with practice and experience. So what basically managing is all about? Managing is all about influencing actions of others. It is about helping organization and units to get things done. That is which means actions and how managers influence actions by the other individuals. Manager does this in three different ways. By managing actions directly, for instance, negotiating contracts, managing projects, etc. So, the manager has to identify those actions which actually lead to the outcome of negotiation and project management. By managing people, so the second point is you can influence your actions by managing people who take the action. For example, motivating them, building teams, enhance the organization culture etc. And third is by managing information that is propel people to take action using budgets, goals, task, delegation etc. So here what we could find out or we can see is that manager can either directly influence people or the manager can influence by managing the people who are taking the action or by managing the information. So this is what we need to understand with respect to the processes and functions of the management. Students, let us now try to see the people differences in the organization. So there are broadly two types of individuals that work in organization or we must say the nomenclature given to these two individuals include either the organizational members or employees are operatives or they are called as managers. Now who are operatives? They are also called as blue collared workers. People who work directly on a job or a task and have no responsibility of overseeing the work of others are called as operatives. While the managers are the one who in the organization direct the activities of the other individuals. Now we have just now finished talking about the Mintzberg, Henry Mintzberg's roles of a manager. So they apply to the individuals who are at the managerial positions in the organization. For these managers who would be carrying out the roles given by the Henry Mintzberg, there are certain essential skills. Though we have already discussed about the basic necessary skills, which were those human skills, conceptual skills, technical skills, diagnostic skills, digital skills and political skills. Now we move on to have, to have an understanding on some general skills to be followed by the managers. So it includes in the traditional management system, they were the decision making, planning and controlling as the basic skills which we have already dealt in detail. Now let us see in contemporary times we have more of communication that is exchange of routine information. So this is to be done by the managers. Another very important skill in today's century is networking skill. The networking skill helps the manager to take up the roles of spokesperson, disseminator and liaison, the one which we discussed in the Henry Mintzberg's role category. Networking helps the manager to have a broadened perspective to understand what competitors are doing, how or what kind of market strategies are followed by the outside organizations and what should be the right set of suppliers for the organizational interest. Next comes the socializing skills where the manager has to interact with others and by interacting the managers can have an information exchange, can have common training platforms for development as a whole. Then comes maintaining discipline. 
Maintaining discipline is highly solicited and extremely important in the organization. Without discipline, the organizational members or processes cannot fall into place. So, this is what is expected by the managers to have high amount of effectiveness. Remember students, effectiveness is very important to achieve the goals. Now we move on to highlight the roles that we have just now studied as given by Mintzberg. How does the role differ with respect to the size of the organization? When the organization is of large size, what are the roles which are prevalent? And when the organization is of small size, what are the roles that are prevalent? So here you can see the roles which are played by the manager under the high category in the large firms is role of a resource allocator. Now can you answer why in the firms which are high in nature or which are bigger firms the role of resource allocator is highly done by the managers as compared to other roles. The reason is as the organization is quite large so the number of resources definitely are big or larger and thus the number of people who have to be distributed with those resources are equally higher. So thus it becomes an important and critical activity in large firms that the manager has to take up the role of a resource allocator. On the contrary, if you see in the small firms, the higher role is of a spokesperson as taken by the manager. Now why in smaller firms spokesperson is at the higher role level? because this small firm may not have larger networking or interaction with the outside world. So the manager has to disseminate the information about the organization to the outside world and tell people how the growth pattern of organization is, what are the products the organization is making, what quality standards the organization is facing and how the organization is having a future growth thought process. Moving further, when we go for the low ranking of the roles in the or low importance of the roles in the organization with respect to the large firms, it is the entrepreneurial role which is in the lower category. Why in larger firms the entrepreneurial role by the manager is relatively less important because there already the organizational structures systems are established they are in place all the divisions and departments are in place the authority centralized or decentralized is already defined so in that case the the promoters or owners of the organizations are already the entrepreneurs who have decided the strategic intent of the organization thus a manager may not be required at a higher level to take up the entrepreneurial role on the other hand when it comes to the smaller firms the low level of role or importance of managerial role is given to the disseminator now why is it so because as such we understand the size of the organization is small so as a result that means number of people in the organization are quite less now when number of headcount or internal employees are quite less then dissemination of information probably is not a hassle they do not have a broader or well established communication channels they may have but they may not necessarily require it thus the role as a disseminator may be taken at a uh, at a lower level then comes at the moderate level <coughs> the importance of roles with respect to the size of the organization include if the size of the organization is large then in that case the roles that managers can pl play at a moderate level include role of a liaison role of a monitor disturbance handler and negotiator now why these four roles with respect to large firms because large firms need to have a licensing with comp competitors or government agencies large firms need to talk about the monitoring process of the organization since the firm is large there can be the disturbances in the organization between the members so disturbance handler and negotiation contracts with the outside agencies to be done on the contrary when the firm is small the manager may have to perform the role of an entrepreneur 
as a figurehead who's the symbolic head of the organization and as the leader of the organization as well so as to set right the path for the subordinates so this is how the as you can see that the the size of the organization also plays an important role when it comes to managerial roles so students this is what we could understand out of various management functions and processes of the management if i may summarize the managerial process and functions performed for organizational goal accomplishment include planning organizing staffing directing and controlling and quickly recapitulating these functions planning is to schedule the activities organize is how to do the activities staffing is to place the right person at right job directing is to define the path and controlling is to evaluate and give the feedback and what were these these all were the managerial functions of the management further management is a process which is concerned with effective utilization of both human and physical resources for attaining organizational and individual goals through facilitating environment so this is a key take away from today's session so as a result we need to identify that what are the environmental conditions which are going to be more suitable so that we can have effective utilization of human and the physical resources coming on to managerial roles refer to the specific actions and roles performed by the managers at part of their jobs so further when we talk about the managerial roles quickly recapitulating those roles which were given by henry mintzberg they were the informational roles interpersonal roles and the decisional roles all three roles play an equal important in the importance in the organization and as student of management you need to see that tomorrow in organization you may have to perform all these or few of these roles all together apart from this one more thing that we discussed in the session were the operative functions of the management which included production human resource management financial management and marketing management so b we also discussed that b any manager every manager has to perform all the managerial functions in the organization the role of managers is pivotal in influencing the attitude and behavior of employees in this regard leading power equipment manufacturer bhel strategy is worth mentioning bhel encourages its managers to adopt transparent channels of communication an open work environment teamwork and respect for new ideas and thoughts to ensure the desired level of employee involvement similarly new employees are encouraged by their managers to freely voice their ideas peers facilitate this process by extending their underlying support and encouragement to these employees the overall objective of managers at all levels of management at bhel is convert to convert the whole organization into a family through necessary freedom and support to all its members effective leadership calls for effective communication with and motivation of employees and in due course of time effective leadership will result in development of a positive work culture so students with the help of this example of bhel we are able to understand that how even our own industries in our country are following such managerial concepts like effective managerial or leadership styles communication pattern having or inculcating the teamwork amongst themselves as a part of management process policies and systems and as a result they are able to achieve good numbers of or you may say high ranking in the fortune 500 companies and this is a great achievement 
So lesson from today's session is that we need to focus more on the managerial functions and roles so that we are able to finally get the desired goals of organizational vision. Thank you.